Hey, hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and today I am sandwiched between my two sublimation printers. Over here on the right, I have my Epson um, converted printer where I put sublimation ink in it myself, and over here on my left, I have my Sawgrass SG500. And in today's video, I'm basically going to go through and talk about both printers and compare them so that you can make the right choice for your craft room. So first up, we have an Epson printer, which I have basically hacked to be a sublimation printer. Um, I have put sublimation ink in this printer, and there are some other things which we'll go into here in a minute, um, but adding that ink into this printer has basically made it into a sublimation printer. But again, it's a hack, so there are some issues with this printer that you need to be aware of. On the other hand, I have my Sawgrass SG500, which is a sublimation specific printer. This printer is designed to do sublimation and it does it really well. Um, but there are some things that you need to know about this machine as well that may make you think that the Epson's a better choice. Let's start with talking about price because I really think that that is probably the one that's gonna get most people. So this printer cost me a whopping $179 and the inks are I think about $20 for a set of four inks. So this is definitely the budget option. And as you'll see later in the video, there are things that you sort of sacrifice to get the budget option, but it's definitely the cheaper way to go. The Sawgrass, on the other hand, is about $624 at my favorite retailer, Heat Transfer Warehouse. It's a good price. Um, and the inks are also expensive. They're about $77 a cartridge. Now you're probably like, whoa, that's crazy. And it might be for you, and that's totally fine. But if you want a more sublimation specific printer without a lot of the problems that you might get out of this printer, you may be willing to pay the extra money. Next up is technical support. So when I got my SG500 here, I was able to sign up with a time to meet with a Sawgrass um, customer service agent, and they went through and installed everything on my computer, which I have to say, was awesome because it didn't look like a particularly easy process. I basically zoomed with them. Don't worry, you don't have to have the camera on. I zoomed with them and um, they basically took over my desktop and installed everything. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> this I had to install myself. Thankfully, installing a regular desktop um, printer is not too difficult on a computer, um, but this was really great to be able to set it up with their team. Now, once you put sublimation ink in there, this warranty is gone, right? Um, because you're turning this printer into something that it wasn't designed to do. Um, it's like taking your car to a Toyota dealership, but you've turned it into a boat and the technicians there are like, we can't work on this, it's a boat. And you're like, but it's still a Toyota Corolla. It's not, it's a boat, they're not gonna work on it. So basically you've hacked this into something it's not supposed to be. So Epson support out the window which is a little frustrating. If you're having issues with the Sawgrass, however, you've got their entire team and they have great customer service. So if you're having issues with your inks, clogging, color, any of the software, any of that, they have people to take care of that for you. And that is a huge benefit of having this machine. If you want this machine, you can do something like join our Sublimation Made Simple Facebook group um, where we talk a lot about sublimation and we sort of try and help each other um, figure out problems we may be having with these types of machines. Can't guarantee anything, but we can try and help you out there. Third, let's talk about color management because this is where the rubber hits the road for me and why it makes this printer worth so much more than this printer. So when you are using this printer, you've put sublimation ink in here, but this printer doesn't know that, right? It has no idea. It thinks it has standard Epson inks in there. And so it's using its own color management software within the machine to lay down the ink on the page as it would if they were regular ink. Problem is, is it doesn't have regular ink, it has sublimation ink, which is formulated differently, it looks different, it just behaves a lot differently than regular ink. So you have to do your own color management on this machine. And I have a video coming up on how to do color management, but trust me, it can be a huge pain and it is one of the number one things that people complain about when it comes to a converted printer. Maybe your pinks are too orange or your teals look really blue and not green enough or your blacks are printing green. Those are all color management issues that you may get with this printer. There are many ways to try and fix that, including changing the print settings as well as using what's called an ICC profile, which is basically a small bit of code in your computer to tell your printer, hey, I don't have Epson inks in here. I've got sublimation inks. Can you try laying the ink down a little bit differently? Sometimes those work. Sometimes they don't, sometimes it's really frustrating, um, but it's sort of um, a piecemeal job when you're trying to do color management with a uh, converted sublimation printer. The Sawgrass, on the other hand, has built-in color management, which is lovely. After more than a year of messing with the color on this machine, every print I've done on here so far has had stunning color. I'm just like so impressed. Everything looks so true to life, exactly what it looks like on the screen, very impressed. 
And that is because when you set up this printer, you are setting it up for the specific ink that you're putting in it. And I'm going to link to my video on the um, overview of this machine and I talk about the two different types of ink, but it really does know exactly what type of ink is in there and it really um, lays down that color absolutely perfectly. All right, next up, number four is software. Now, when you get an Epson EcoTank printer, you can use whatever software you want, which can both be awesome, but also overwhelming, right? You can, I mean, I have an overview and a link to it of 12 different types of sublimation software that you can use. You can use something as simple as Google Docs all the way up to something like Photoshop. Um, and you can print from all of those programs to this printer. So that's great. You can use a bunch of different programs, but it's also a little intimidating because it doesn't have any sort of built-in software that tells you what to do. The Sawgrass, on the other hand, has two types of built-in software. The first is Print Manager, which is a very simple way to print your images. Um, I go into that in my other video that I linked before. It's super simple um, and it's very easy to use. They also have Creative Studio, which is sort of their design software. And I'll be honest, I've only played around in there a little bit. It's fairly robust, but it also can be a little tricky. So I'm going to work with it a lot and see if I can get a good video um, about using it. But it does have tons and tons of templates. So if you're like, I wanna make a mug and you need like a mug wrap size, or if you wanna put something on a dog tag, or if you want to make a certain size t-shirt, all, all of those templates are built in with Creative Studio, which makes it super awesome for using with sublimation because something like Photoshop doesn't have any built-in templates. You can also use any of those other softwares to create your designs in print. You run it all through Print Manager, it's pretty easy, um, but you can use any other software that you want with this machine. Number five, let's talk about maintenance. So when you have a sublimation printer like this, it is critical that you print um, every week or so to make sure that your print heads don't get clogged. I learned this the hard way. I went about a month between prints when I was traveling in July and I came back and no matter what I did, I could not get my magenta unclogged. Um, I tried every trick in the book, no dice. So I had to buy a second Epson printer, which is really frustrating. So if you do have one of these printers, you want to make sure that you're printing at least once a week and something that uses all four colors in the tanks. So you don't just want to print like a pink image. You want to print something that uses C, M, Y, and K so that you make sure that the ink is flowing through those print heads so that they don't get clogged. The Sawgrass, on the other hand, has a built-in cleaning mode, um, which means that it pushes just a little bit of ink through the tubes and then through the print heads to keep them from clogging. That does mean that there is a waste tank with this machine, and that's something that you may have to replace. Um, I would buy one and have it on hand because once it's full, you can't use your machine, which is kind of frustrating. Um, so you want to make sure to have an extra waste tank on hand. They're about 30, I think they're about $39. Um, so, you know, that is another cost that you need to look into. But the fact that this machine is designed not to clog is a huge benefit to me over this one, which I've had quite a few clogging issues with. So really, it boils down to what your needs are. This is a much more economical option. Like I said, the inks are cheaper, the printer itself is cheaper, there's no waste tank. Um, but I also am on my second one, so maybe it is costing me about as much as this printer costs me. Um, you do need to do your own maintenance. You need to make sure you're printing often. You also need to know that you're gonna have to do some hacking together of your color management. For some people, that's really easy. When I had my first Epson printer, I had really simple color management. With my second one, I've struggled a lot more. They're the same printer, which is really frustrating, but it's just how it is. So know that you're kind of getting a mixed bag when you get this machine. This machine obviously costs a lot more, but if you're doing a lot of sublimation, I really think that this is a good machine for you. Um, one, your color should be great right out of the box. You don't have to do any of that color management. And then second, you don't have to worry about any of the clogging issues. They also have fantastic customer support. So should you run across some clogging issues or color issues or any other kind of issues, software issues, you can just reach out to their team and they should be able to help. So that is my comparison between a converted Epson EcoTank printer for sublimation and a sublimation specific Sawgrass SG500. If you have any questions about either of these machines, I am happy to answer those in the comments. As always, if you found this helpful, please give me a like, give me a follow if you'd like more weekly content and I'll see you next week.